I had 100 and 300 and 4 fever. The tournament directors and all the referees sympathized with me saying that, you know, we're really sorry for your condition. In a way, letting me know that I had already lost the match. But I just replied to them saying that the match isn't over as yet. Hi, I'm Pankaj Adbani and I want to talk to you about my long game. Let's go. Oh. They say that destiny is something that you can't control and you should just let it flow. You know, we were in the US on a holiday in 1990 when we got the news that Iraq invaded Kuwait. We were all in shock because we didn't know what to do next. So somehow our uncle wired, you know, some money across to us and we shifted to India. When we came to Bangalore, dad just fell in love with the place and we ended up settling in Bangalore. Our house was just two minutes from the snooker club. And that's how I got introduced to the wonderful sport of billiards and snooker. Oh my 25th world title. You're expected to play at a particular level at a very high standard every single time you compete. But as a human being, I know that's not possible. You know, it takes me back to a time when I was in the Asian finals in 2019. It was the only title in my career that eluded me for years. To make matters worse, I had 100 and 304 fever. It was a best of 11 match, so I needed to win six. The tournament directors and all the referees sympathized with me saying that, you know, we're really sorry for your condition. In a way, letting me know that I had already lost the match. Uh, but I just replied to them saying that the match isn't over as yet. So, I survived on Chai and I went on to win the final 6-3 from being 3-1 down. It's not how you, you know, do capitalize on your good days, but it's how you manage your bad days that defines who you are as a player. Hmm. It's one of the toughest phases in my career. The broken cue is actually symbolic of what I was going through inside because I was broken. It takes me back to 2006 where I was about to give up the game. I had only the Asian Games left in Doha. So I decided that this was going to be my last tournament of my career because of the lack of support from concerned authorities. Just the fact that I was playing a very unconventional sport which people never really understood. My brother Shri had come down from Australia and did a few mental exercises with me on how to change my internal dialogue. And he said, since this is your very last tournament, just go all out and give it your best. Not only did I win the gold medal for India in billiards, but I also never looked back ever since. That very moment where I spoke to someone and especially a person who is really close to me, my elder brother, uh, changed my perception of mental health. Uh, so my lesson and takeaway from this is that never be too afraid to ask for professional advice, especially when it concerns your mental health and your mental well-being. Wonder what's coming up next. Oh. If somebody had to ask me what my greatest achievement was in Q Sports, I would emphatically tell them. For me, it's been able to excel in both billiards and snooker at the highest levels. In 2003, when I won my first world title, when I came back to India, I told my coach and most of the senior players that I want to now switch to billiards after winning the world title in snooker and actually excel. They all started laughing at me in a way, saying that, no, it's impossible because normally players only specialize in either billiards or snooker because the techniques, the scoring patterns, the approach is entirely different. But I thought, let me do something that hasn't been done before or it rather just attempt to do it and attempt to go out of your comfort zone when you really understand your true potential and, and realize how much you're capable of doing. If you try, you risk failure. If you don't try, you ensure failure. Huh. Bow tie. For years, we have been following the age-old tradition of the formal dress code, which is the waistcoat, bow tie, long sleeve shirts, trousers. And while it looks classy on television and while we're playing the games, it's a bit too formal and uppity, according to me. In one of the championships in 2004, I'd lost the finals of the Asian. I was just going down the lift and one of the hotel residents ended up asking me to serve them a drink. I also realized then that our dress code has to be changed. Many people still feel that it's an elitist sport. I've always been of the firm opinion and I stick by it that we need to be more inclusive. So I would love to invite more people and include more people into the world of billiards and snooker. And that would mean advocating a strong change in the dress code, making it casual and just lightening things up a bit.
Wow, this is uh, it says subtle aggression. When I play on the table and I get a good shot, I cannot go around, you know, showing who I am. I'm the best or I'm God's gift to mankind. No. Ours is not a out there sport where you, you know, pump fists or you use bad language on the field. When I say subtle aggression, what I actually mean is let your body language do the talking. Uh, there are opponents who have tried to throw me off. You sort of give it back to them in a very subtle way where you go and stand near them and take your own sweet time in a way giving it back to them through your body language that listen, I know what you're up to and I'm also going to be equally aggressive but I'm not going to be unsporting like you. There are many people who ask me how can you be so calm but beneath all that calm is the fire raging from within that I want to go out there and win gold medal every single time. I want to go out there and perform for my country every single time and I will do it with subtle aggression. What's next? Ooh, <laughs> holiday time. Life is not just about your profession or your work or your sport in my case. Uh, and the fact that we need to balance, you know, our work and life and, and also gives us time to regroup, to rejuvenate. It allows us to just explore the human side. Even in the game, there's a balance that's required between attack and safety in the sense that there are days when you're really seeing the ball well and you play a little more positively and attacking. But there are days when you're not seeing that the ball that well, so you have to play a little more defensive and wait for easier chances. Even that requires a certain level of balance. Personal growth is to identify when you need to create that balance and juggle between all the aspects of your life. I was just, what, 10 years old when I first picked up the cue. Uh, I was not taken seriously by, by the senior players. They used to say, hey, what are you playing so little? It's so small, you know. My coach refused me the first time I approached him. He said that, no, you're too short. I remember one of the headlines in the papers read in my first tournament, Tiny Tot Advani sails through to the quarterfinals. It got to me and I, and I said that, no, I'm going to prove to all of them that size and age doesn't matter. When somebody criticizes you and passes negative comments, Turn that and channelize that into positive action. Use that anger to fuel you to achieve greater heights. And, and let your performance do the talking rather than your mouth. <clears throat> Pool, billiards, snooker. You know, the multiple versions we have of Q Sports and how each sport teaches us something new. At the start of my career, I could have very well sat at home and said, okay, I'm good at one game. Let me just stick to it. We're taught to be conformists. The hunger to learn, to evolve uh, in your profession and in your personal life is, is something that, that really keeps me going. There's never an end to learning. And the day you feel you know it all is the day your growth is halted. Learn new things, explore different opportunities because you never know how much you can grow in your profession as well as in your personal life. The Padma Bhushan. Whenever people ask me, what, what is it that you really play for? You know, you've achieved so much, what next? My answer is very simple. I love my game and I love my country and I love playing for my country. In every profession, there is pressure. It's how you deal with it that determines how much or how far you'll go. There was this match in Bangalore once where I was down in the semi-finals. My mom said I almost had a heart attack because you, you know, you really pushed it to the very end and then you came back and you won the match. And I was so annoyed because I, I know I could have probably done better and finished it off earlier. But it was that pressure that brought out the best in me. The best part is that if you embrace pressure and accept that this is part and parcel of the job, it always invariably leads to positive results.